Hi, this is Will Wilde, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the harmonica style of Junior Wells, taking some cues from his classic Hoodoo Man Blues. So, all you're going to need for this is a regular harmonica in the key of D, and uh, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so he's coming in in the intro um, with these octaves or, or tongue splits. Okay, so if you haven't done octaves or tongue splits before, the mouth shape can be a little bit tricky to get at first. So he's starting with one and four draw. So if you just play holes one to four, you'll get this major chord on, on the draw. And then from there to get the octave, you just point the tip of your tongue and put it down right in the middle on holes two and three. So you're left playing hole one out of the left hand corner of your mouth and hole four out of the right hand corner. And then we're gonna stay in this mouth shape and move it around a little bit. So we're going one and four draw, two and five blow, back to one and four draw. And then to two and five draw. Okay, so the two and five draw isn't an octave. Um, there you're getting your root note in, in the two draw and you're getting the flat seven above in the five draw. So it's like a um, fragment of a, a dominant seven chord. So, still very useful in blues. So... That's the first phrase. Then he goes up. So, we're going one and four draw, two and five blow, back to one and four draw. And then two and five draw to three and six blow. Now I'm playing that last note there as three and six. I think he actually played it just as as six blow as a single note. And and tongue slapped it. Um, personally, I, I prefer to, to stay in the octave shape for that. I think it just kind of beefs it up a little bit more. So then, coming down from there... We've got this little descending blues scale run. Starting at the, the flat 5 and going down from there. So, we're going from 4 draw bend, which is the flat 5, to 4 blow, then 3 draw half step, Two draw, two draw whole step, and two draw again. But he's adding in um, a little bit of whole four with that three half step. So it gives it that, that crunch, that kind of dirtier sound. <laughs> Which is something that he does a lot. I mean, all, all of the great blues players did this kind of thing a lot. Um, but especially Cotton and, and Junior Wells, I'd say, used a lot of <laughs> this kind of really crunchy, um, fairly aggressive sounding, um, you know, the, these double stops on, on their draw notes that they would wail on. So, so far we've got this. So after that, okay, so we're going three half step to four blow, then scoop up on the four draw. And then he's bending the four down and just dropping on to hole three. And 
And then he goes... So two whole step, two draw. That three half step with a little bit of four bleeding in again. And then he's going straight in on the four bend. And sliding down to hold two. So catching hold three on the way. Now, at the end of the turnaround, you, you're kind of expecting to hear um, something like this. Which would be kind of following what, what the rest of the band is doing. But you'll notice he cuts that phrase off short. Um, that's something that he does a lot too. He'll kind of cut phrases off shorter and the rest of the phrase is kind of implied, but he doesn't actually play it. And I think sometimes he does that for kind of dramatic or dynamic effect. But I think also he probably did it a lot just to give himself time to get set up ready to sing the first line. Um, because when you're, when you're going quickly between playing and singing, um, ideally you need a little bit of time to, to breathe and, relax the throat and the tongue before you sing your first th phrase. Otherwise, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. So, um, let's, let's carry on and skip forward to the, to the solo. Okay. So this is a, a, a lick that, um, one of the licks I cover in my blues course. I call it the slide lick. You find it in pretty much every blues song in, in one form or another. So we're going four draw, bending it quickly down, and then sliding along to hold two. And he's bringing in a little bit of that throat vibrato on the two draw, which is also covered in my course. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, um, I'd like to ask a little favor of you, if that's all right. Um, I've been nominated for uh, the best instrumentalist in the UK Blues Awards. Um, I've made it through to the final five. Um, I'm the only harmonica player that's, that's nominated. Um, the voting is open until the 25th of February. So I'll put a link to the voting form below. If you could take just two minutes to vote for me, um, I would be uh, very grateful. Um, Right, let's get back to this. I think that's what he did. Okay, so you hear a lot of blues players when they play kind of fast or fluid kind of phrases. Um, a lot of the time it will be all draw notes. And a lot of the licks will center around the four draw and the four draw bend and the, the whole side side of it, like what he's doing here. Okay, so we're starting on the four draw bend, letting it up, and then going to the five draw. So you get this little triplet. And then at the end there, he's going four draw, four draw bend, and dropping onto that three draw half step as a double stop with, with a bit of whole four bleeding in. So again, you get that kind of contrast in texture between the smooth single note and that more aggressive, crunchy sounding double stop. At the end there, it's just uh, two draw and then one draw, pulling it down. Notice he leaves a lot of spaces in his playing as well. Um, he's a very dynamic player, so he'll sort of play something with a lot of impact. Two, three, four. And then come in with, with the next phrase. So something that, that Albert 
King used to say um, was, <laughs> this was the advice that he gave to, to Gary Moore. Um, obviously, Gary Moore was like a blues rock uh, guitar player. I love Gary Moore's playing, by the way. Um, but uh, Albert King told Gary to play every other phrase. <laughs> so every, um, every other phrase that you think about playing, leave it out. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that there's necessarily a right or wrong. I think Albert King and Gary Moore are both great for, for different reasons. Um, but it's, it's a good thing to, to think about sometimes, you know, if, if you're trying to leave more space in your, in your soloing, try that. Just play every other phrase. See, see how it works out for you. So here we're kind of combining a couple of these ideas. We've got that triplet. So four draw bend, four draw, five draw. And then that slide lick that I talked about. Four draw, bend it down, slide along to the two draw. Something along those lines. So he's kind of going up the scale to, to the sixth blow and then coming down. Ending up back on that three and four draw, double stop again. <laughs> there, he's going to that two and five draw split again. <laughs> so that's four draw, two and five split. Four draw again, three draw, two draw. Then he's going one draw, two draw whole step, and then draw one and four octave. Junior would use those octaves a lot on, on the turnaround. So one and four draw over the five chord, one and four blow over the four chord in the turnaround. So this is a good example of really using that four draw bend um, for you know dramatic bluesy effects. So if you think about it, the only difference between your minor pentatonic scale and your blues scale is the flat five, which is our four draw bend or one draw bend. So minor pentatonic. <laughs> You, know, you can use that over blues, and many people do all the time. And then your blues scale is the same, but with the addition of the four bend. So the fact that that one note is the difference between minor pentatonic and blues scale kind of tells you that that's the note you want to lean on when you want to be really bluesy. Yeah. So when you want to be really bluesy, just lean on that four draw bend. Notice when he came down to the two draw there, really wide throat vibrato, like I talked about in the, the Hall and Wolf video I put up a couple of weeks ago. So obviously the, the purpose of doing this isn't to necessarily learn to play this solo note for note. Um, it's to look at how Junior approaches playing a blues like this. Um, and, you know, maybe you can take the odd lick or two or the odd little concept or idea from it and use it in your own playing. Um, now, I have a course, a blues course. It's called the Ultimate Blues Harmonica Soloist. And in that course, I teach how to use scales to improvise over blues and how to add all these little nuances, things like vibrato, double stops, tongue slaps, octaves, etc. How to add them into your playing and make them a part of your own voice. Um, there's 10 weeks of uh, material to work through um, with tab and backing tracks to work with. 
I've had a lot of good feedback from from people that have taken the course. Um, I'll put a, a link to it below if you want to check out more. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.